Spoilers for the entirety of Legion. In Legion Chapter 12, Episode 4 of Season 2, David gets trapped inside Sid's mind as he sees the events of her life from when she was born until she's around 16 years old. Because of the events of the previous episode, where Melanie and Patonomy were trapped inside their own minds through the maze created by the monk of the Migo Order, David assumed trying to free Sid from her maze would be just as easy, seeing as it would simply be him trying to figure out her core desire, and that would wake her from her dream. However, seeing as the monk killed himself, Sid wasn't in her maze anymore. Instead, she was about to wake up when David entered her mind, and so she created the loop of her memories to make David understand a point that David spends the entire episode trying to figure out. After we see the scene where Sid changes bodies with her mom and has sex with her mom's boyfriend, during which she goes back to her own body which causes the guy to be taken by the police, David understands what point Sid is making. It's not about being alone or about being in love. It's about the things you survived. As it's written, the world breaks everyone and afterward, some are strong at the broken places. The entire episode shows what Sid has been through and how that affected her to do the things she's done, to hurt those girls from her school, to get drunk and go out simply because her mom was a bit negligent and how she used to cut and hurt herself because she felt worthless. Throughout the episode, we saw the same moment twice, with Sid's mom talking about one essay she wrote that has a passage about the word survivor. Afterward, some are strong at the broken places. The word survivor used to mean one who has survived. But now modern psychiatry would have us believe that survival is a curse, like Sisyphus with his rock. And so every day we wake to survive again. The idea from Sid wasn't to show that. You think that if you show me who you are, who you really are, all the mistakes, all the foul up things you did, that I won't love you anymore. It was instead to show that. It's not the story of a little girl whose mommy couldn't hug her, who grew up wishing a prince's kiss could erase all her damage. It's about the damage itself and how it makes us strong, not weak. Sid doesn't feel sorry for herself like David does. David, the, the lunatic, the drug addict who stole and cheated and ruined everything. And yeah, you made some bad choices, but you are young. And the world is an ugly place for people like us too. People like us, so... She acknowledges her flaws. She acknowledges how her damage has changed her, but ultimately she's become a better person, a stronger person by going through all of this. I heard this story collection. I want a new book. At first I was confused. Why is she carrying around this sordid tale of sex clubs and drug addicts? And, and then I read this. Junkies and masochists and hookers and those who have squandered everything are the ring of brightest angels around heaven. Which is contrasted by David feeling sorry for himself and blaming everyone else for his problems, which left him with the feeling that he's been stepped on his entire life, and so he's entitled to be loved. I am a good person. I deserve love. And that feeling of being entitled to love, of needing to be loved beyond anything else, of feeling sorry for himself, is what Sid wants to show as being weak. Do you know what love is? It's a hot bath. What happens to things when you leave him in a bath for too long? Huh? They get soft. Fall apart. Sid sees that David's sense of wonderment about being with Sid, about how Sid saved him as they fell in love, causes them to go soft. It causes David to assume everything will be fine in the end, which leaves him unprepared to do what has to be done, to think of the bigger picture and to be objective about what he has to do. It's a war. Baby, this life, the things we endure. You said you saw the future and it's an apocalypse. Who survives that? The lovers or the fighters? They sell us this lie that Love's gonna save us. All it does is make us stupid and weak. 
things. Look at me. Love isn't gonna save us. It's what we have to save. Pain makes us strong enough to do it. All our scars, our anger, our despair, it's armor. And so, if we think about what Sid pointed out here, we realize that she still believes it in the future, even after David has turned and destroyed the world. Her plan when she talks to David from the future isn't to kill David or to stop David, but it is to change his mind. She doesn't think love will save her, so what she does is try to save love so she can save the world. She tries to guide David towards a path where he never turns. Because future Sid knows that David may have done bad things, that he has lied to her, that he's cheated, that he has hidden things from her and caused terrible things to happen. But ultimately, she still believes she has to save love to save the world. She has to show David that what he's been going through during his life isn't some sort of shield he uses to justify his actions, but it's what guides him to bettering himself and realizing he is stronger for it, not weaker. Baby, God loves the sinners best because our fire burns bright, bright, bright. Burn with me. And that's why, when present Sid realizes David ends the world, when she realizes David drugged her and had sex with her, when she realizes David only cares about revenge, he doesn't care about saving Oliver, and that he's not trying to save love. He's giving in to his weaknesses, and all she can do now is stop David because he's too powerful. And Sid has learned her lesson that David is too far gone, that he cannot understand how he's not saving love, how he's allowed his scars to weaken him, and he can't be brought back. Which is what allows for one of the best moments in the show, when Sid goes back in time with the Carries, and they find David's mom, Gabrielle, taking care of baby David, and they had the choice to kill that baby and save the world. There are some people that you can save, and some that you can't. David, adult David, we can't save him. He's too far gone. But a baby? This baby? Him we can save. Sid doesn't let her anger get the better of her. She doesn't let what David did to her make her weak, to make her give in to doing something like killing a baby. She uses her pain as a guiding force to see that David can still be saved. Only it's not her David, it's the baby. The David that hasn't done anything wrong yet, and who she believes will make better choices from now on. Be a good boy. Which is the same thing that future Sid tried to do in season 2, trying to guide David towards a better path, so that that David doesn't become the David she knows, the David who hurt her, and who's willing to destroy the world simply so he gets what he believes he deserves, love. In conclusion, this dialogue serves so much in terms of establishing character motivations and contextualizing moments from previous and future episodes of the show, by showing Sid's perspective on her scars, on her damage, being so vastly different to what David believes, and how she tried to help David just stop on his self-pity parade that she unfortunately couldn't do, which led to David's turn. I'm the one who saves them. Who? Everybody. I, I'm the hero. I save love. You get it? <laughs> Farouk, he's the devil. What he did to me, what he does to everybody, they owe you everything. This world. A baby abandoned by his parents with a demon stuck in his head. Used. Tricked. Judged. Chucked in a dumpster like fat from a clinic. And they tell you it's you, that you're disgusting. Like somebody's used condom that keeps getting stuck to people's shoes. You want to know the truth? They're terrified you're going to wake up one day and realize you're a god. And so I believe that scene with Sid and David talking in chapter 12 is the best dialogue in the show because of both what it does to establish the differences between David and Sid when both of them have a very similar past in terms of all they went through which is a big part of why they fall in love with season 1, but now it shows how they're drifting apart, which is an important plot point in season 2, while giving Sid a lot more depth than simply being David's love interest, and showing that she does take accountability for her actions in her past, that she doesn't blame other people and victimize herself to excuse what she's done, that she wears what she's done as armor and uses it to be a better person. And it's also really good dialogue since it gives her an internal struggle to overcome, which she does through the episode in season 3 where she has a second childhood with Melanie and Oliver as her parents. All this while also showing way earlier how David's turn is completely in character for him, which is done continuing the idea that David sees himself as a victim and that he's a good person who deserves more from life, which was established in season 1. 
So yeah, this is all I have for today. This is a shorter video that I just decided to make because I was re-watching Legion and I got to that scene and I'm like, yeah, I need to make a video on this ASAP, which is an idea I've had for a while. So yeah, this is why I did this video. Also because I wanted to post at least one more video before the year ended and I wouldn't have time to edit the video I currently wanted to have posted. So sorry about that, but it should be out soon-ish um, on the first week of January, hopefully. So yeah. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, um, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support this year, it's been actually amazing. So yes, thank you very much, and I'll talk to y'all next time. Goodbye.